CRIM 2 Morning News begins now. 5.30 now, the Spokane City Council just approved funds for a new Spokane apartment building. We'll break down what this means for the community. And as we take a live look at Coeur d'Alene, cloudy skies at the moment, but we are still expecting plenty of dry weather throughout the course of this week. 5.30 now, good morning. Thanks so much for being with us here on CREM 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York. We are kicking off our rush block this morning with more on what led up to a manhunt. CREM 2's Nicole Hernandez is near 10th and Maple Street with the latest. Nicole, it started this morning with an arrest. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Jen. So the roads that were blocked off earlier this morning are now back open here at 10th and Maple was the last place the officers actually reopened. And that's because this right here behind me is where a man shot an officer. Police say it all started when an undercover officer tried to pull over a man who he thought had a felony warrant. There was uh, several rounds fired from the sus suspect vehicle at the officer. Um, the officer was not hit, but his vehicle was hit a couple times. Uh, after that, the officer's vehicle was disabled and the suspect fled the area. Here you can see one of the three bullet holes on the undercover officer's car. That cop car and the suspect's car also collided at one point, causing the other damage that you can see. And the man police were searching for is in custody now. They found him near 5th and Freya earlier this morning, and he was cooperative that second time around as officers found him with a second traffic stop. Now, luckily, no one was hurt in this whole situation throughout last night and into this morning. But at this point, we don't know the suspect's name or what that felony warrant was for. But we'll keep you updated as we get more info. Live here on the South Hill, I'm Nicole Hernandez. I'll send it back to you, Jen. All right, Nicole, thank you. 532. Now let's check in with Thomas Patrick for a look outside. Yeah, good morning, Jen. And as we take a look outside, it actually looks quite a bit cloudy in Coeur d'Alene. So there are those low hanging clouds, probably from the excess moisture that we had from the rainfall over the weekend. But this is the Spokane observation. It's actually reporting a mix of clear skies and some cloud cover overall. Hard to pick it up on Doppler radar at the moment. You see a little bit of haziness uh, with that particular satellite radar layer, but no rain getting uh, picked up from those from that kind of cloud cover. We go through the noon hour with a little bit of cloudiness, but that should clear up easily for the afternoon with high temperatures easily getting to, into the 80s. Not much change in the days to come, but we'll highlight any small variations for the rest of this week. All right, Thomas, thank you. It is coming up on 533 now. Power is restored to Avista customers in Coeur d'Alene. Last night, more than 3,500 Avista customers were without power. Crews restored power to all customers around 2 a.m. An Avista spokesperson says the outages may be caused, may have been caused rather, by a flood station issue, but the cause has not been officially determined. Crews restored 911 service to landline phones around Medimont, Idaho. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office announced the outage yesterday around 3 p.m. Deputies say the outage impacted about 260 homes. Frontier communication leaders say the problem stemmed from a buried line. Well, we are waiting to learn more about a woman rescued from the Spokane River. Bystanders and firefighters helped pull her from the water yesterday near the Sullivan Bridge. Crews say they immediately started CPR and they were able to detect a heartbeat. Medics took the woman to a local hospital. Her current condition is unknown. Authorities did not provide any other details about the victim other than that she is a woman in her mid 30s. The Williams Flats fire is burning nearly 45,000 acres on the Colville Reservation. It is only 45% contained. Level 1 evacuations are still in place for the Goat Ranch and Hellgate area, also the areas along Wilmot Creek. Level 3 evacuations are in place at areas south of Four Corners. They are also in place near the shore of Lake Roosevelt along Nine Mile Hellgate Road. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Ben Carson will be in Spokane today. He is set to meet with Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers. Carson is scheduled to participate in a roundtable discussion as well. He will also tour the Spokane Envision Center. It provides housing, employment, and educational services to those who need it most, among other offerings. Well, that is your Rush Block. Today's big headlines from here in the Inland Northwest. 
You can let us know what's happening in your neighborhood as well. Just head to the Krem2 Facebook page and send us a message. It is 535 now. The Spokane City Council just approved funds for a new apartment complex. In a 5 to 1 vote last night, the council approved money to transform an old bank building into the Riverside Commons. It will be a six story building with apartments, restaurants and retail space. Krem 2's Shana Walltower has more on the project and the debate surrounding it. What it actually does is public improvements. Projects like this will not benefit our entire community, but a select group of people. This was just some of the discussion about a project to invest $100,000 into a new apartment building in East Downtown. It would be on the northwest corner of Brown Street and Riverside Avenue. The building is set to include 104 apartment units with 7,200 square feet of restaurant and retail space. City documents show the building would be one of the first ground up and mixed use buildings developed in the area in several years. City Council would essentially give developers more than $106,000 to invest in the project. Councilman Ben Stuckert says the apartments will mainly be used for student housing. Beyond the 100000 discussed tonight, the project would also qualify for about $1.3 million in city incentives, including exemptions on some taxes. And that's where some of the disagreement came between council members. Stuckert says he supports the project because of the economic growth and jobs he says it will bring to the area. It's in the right way owned by the city is what this pays for. It doesn't pay for anything private. But Councilwoman Kate Burke wasn't convinced and was the opposing vote. She says this money should be put toward building more low-income housing. Projects like this will not benefit our entire community but a select group of people. We need to stop tinkering around with the trickle-down housing and actually start investing in low-income low affordable housing that will actually benefit our community members. But now that the project has passed the council, it goes to the mayor for his signature. Shana Walltower, Crime 2 News. All right, Shana, thank you. 537. Now let's check in with Thomas for one thing you need to know. Yeah, the one thing to, that you need to know weather-wise is that it'll be pretty much normal out there. In terms of temperatures, at least our average high temperature in Spokane is 84 for today. And I'm forecasting a high of 83. It'll pretty much be on the normal basically anywhere across the inland northwest. Well, it's time for your speed feed this morning. Stories you'll probably see on your social media. Grab your popcorn because Friends is heading to the big screen across the country for the 25th anniversary of the hit show. The three-day celebration will take place at the end of September and each night will feature four episodes. Even if, you're, even if you've memorized every single episode, you've still got a reason to go because the showings will bring 12 iconic episodes and never before seen bonus features to the theater. A full listing of participating theaters will be released August 16th. A new musical about the life of Princess Diana will open on Broadway next spring and there will be no shortage of royal drama. Let me tell you, the pilot drives right into the affairs and is based on actual events from Prince Charles and her media scrutiny. Now this play gives audiences an in-depth look at the princess life. The play is called Simply Diana and played by Jenna DeWall who appeared in American Idol and Kinky Boots on Broadway. Opening night is set for March 31st in New York City. And the internet is taking lessons in making friends when a flight passenger met his new bestie through a window. All right, Brianna Colby tweeted this video of her boyfriend playing a game of rock, paper, scissors with a tarmac worker before heading out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. The video has been viewed more than 12.8 million times and has been retweeted more than 285,000 times. That is insane. So I guess simple fun and friendship is taking over your feed this morning. I'm sure it'll make you laugh. I know it made me smile. That's your feed, speed feed. We'll send it back to you, Jen. All right, Dana Marie, thank you. Here we go. Ready? Okay. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. Oh, we both got scissors. Okay, one more time. Oh, Jen, I got paper too. Oh. One more time, go, okay. go, go, go. Okay, well, we're gonna come back All at the right. next. We, we're too similar. We're failure at that. <laughs> All right, Dana Marie, thank you so Thanks. much. It is 5.39 now. Well, here in the Inland Northwest, we may be seeing some warm weather, but that's not the case down under. Coming up after the break, a daily dose of cuteness involving kangaroos and snow. 
Well, which would you rather have, internet or air conditioning? Coming up at 6, we explain why a majority of Americans say their vacation would be a disaster without one of them.